Lisa is a 37-year-old mom in Tampa, Florida. She loves cheering at her son's soccer games. Lately, just walking from the parking lot to the field leaves her gasping and her lungs feeling like they're shrinking instead of expanding. And the reason? Bronchiectasis, a tongue twister disease with no FDA-approved drugs and flare-ups that land patients in the ER several times a year. Now, flip the scene to Jake, an electrician diagnosed with pulmonary arterial hypertension. His heart works overtime because the blood vessels in his lungs are squeezed tight. Current treatments for Jake require 6 to 8 inhalations a day. Imagine carrying a mini nebulizer everywhere he goes. Enter Insmed, a biotech company that in the last few weeks unveiled a once daily inhaled powder that in phase 2 slashed vessel pressure by a jaw drop in 35%, the perfect solution for Jake. And in less than 90 days is expecting to hear the FDA verdict on the first pill ever aimed at stopping Lisa's lung damage in its tracks. If these programs succeed, they don't just tap on the 8 billion market, they hand people like Lisa and Jake their breath, their energy, their lives back. Let's dive into the story behind this under the radar biotech rocket. Let's go. Insmed's story starts in a basement lab at the University of Virginia. Back in 1988, pharmacology chair Dr. Joseph Lorner was tinkering with insulin-like molecules for diabetes when he decided, well, small diseases deserve big science too. He incorporated a tiny startup in Charlottesville and called it Insmed. Meanwhile, in the late 90s, another garage-sized outfit named Transafe was quietly perfecting inhalable drug particles in New Jersey. Their paths were about to cross, shaping InMed's future. Today, InMed's mission is simple yet powerful. Transform the lives of patients with rare and serious diseases. That clear mission drew in Will Lewis, a biotech leader known for fixing struggling companies. He became CEO in 2012. Since then, InMed has grown from a tiny, one drug outfit into a company of about a thousand employees with three drugs in late stage trials. It still lives by Dr. Larner's rule, go where patients need help the most. Only now, Insmed has the muscle to make news and maybe make history. Big goals need steady hands and Insmed has gathered the team that combines deep scientific expertise with proven business savvy. It starts at the top with CEO and board chair Will Lewis. Think of Will as the coach who's turned struggling biotech companies into winners. He joined Insmed in 2012 to guide it through FDA approvals. Alongside him is Sarah Bornstein, the chief financial officer. Sarah once managed the books for a cancer drug startup that sold to Novartis for nearly $4 billion. Now she ensures Insmed has the financial fuel needed for groundbreaking research and successful launches. And then there's the chief medical officer, Dr. Martina Flammer. After years at Pfizer and Novartis specializing in lung diseases, Martina now directs Insmed's clinical trials and communicates with the FDA about safety and results. Together, they blend strategic vision, financial insight, and medical excellence, exactly what's needed to transform lab discoveries into real medicines that change lives. With the right leadership in place, Insmed is ready for its biggest test yet, Brensocatip, a pill that could change the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. Right now, Brensocatip sits in the FDA's inbox, awaiting its critical PDUFA decision on August 12, 2025. Approval hinges on results from the groundbreaking Phase 3 Aspen study, the largest trial ever conducted in bronchiectasis. In that study, more than 700 adults who had experienced at least two lung flare-ups in the previous year took either Prensocatib or a placebo pill daily for a year. The results were striking. Patients on Prensocatib saw about one-third 
fewer flare-ups than those on placebo and gained on average six additional flare-free weeks before their first attack. Side effects were mostly mild like a mouth sores, skin rashes, but serious complications were no more frequent than in the placebo group. Why does this matter so much? Bronchiectasis damages the lungs, causing mucus to build up, bacteria to multiply, and infections to recur repeatedly. About 70,000 Americans receive this diagnosis annually, with more than half a million currently managing the disease. Today, treatments focus solely on managing symptoms through antibiotics, steroids, and demanding chest physio routines, but none address the underlying cause. Prensogatib is different. It targets an enzyme that overstimulates white blood cells fueling constant inflammation. With just one small pill each morning, no inhalers, no nebulizer or IVs, patients might finally have a therapy that stops flare-ups before they start. If the FDA says yes in August, Brensocative would become the first approved medication to address bronchiectasis at its root. For patients living with this relentless condition, that could mean fewer scary nights in emergency rooms and more time spent simply enjoying life. While Insmet's Brensocative sits on the FDA launchpad, the company is already delivering promising news on its next big drug, TPIP, an inhaled powder designed to tackle pulmonary arterial hypertension, or PAH. PAH is a disease where the pressure in the lungs, blood vessels, soars dangerously high, forcing the heart to strain just to keep the blood moving. Insmed released phase 2 trial results and here's the headline in plain English. Over 16 weeks, 102 adults with PAH took either TPIP or a placebo each morning. Doctors focused on pulmonary vascular resistance or PVR. Think of that as how hard blood must squeeze through the lungs. They also measured walking distance and the heart stress test known as NT-PRO BNP. And the results were impressive. Blood flow boost. TPIP reduced PVR by about 35% compared to placebo, far exceeding the 20% drop that specialists typically consider a huge success. More stamina. Patients with TPIP walked an extra 35 meters, about half the length of a football field, in the standard 6-minute walking test. 3. Heart relief. Levels of NT-ProBNP dropped by 60%, indicating significantly less strain on the heart. 4. Easy to use. 3 out of 4 patients comfortably reached the highest 640 microgram dose, taken once each morning in a quick 30-second puff much simpler than today's treatments, which require multiple inhalations through the day. Mild side effects. The most common complaints were a mild cough and a headache, with no serious drug-related issues reported. At the end of all, there was high enthusiasm. About 95% of patients chose to continue in the ongoing extension trial eager to double their dose for potentially even better results. Current treatments help, but they're cumbersome multiple inhalations or constant IV therapy. TPIP could revolutionize care by offering once daily convenience and higher, more effective doses at home. The next step, INSMED will soon meet with FDA to plan phase three trials. If this confirm the recent promising results, TPIP may become the first prostanoid patients can take just once a day, giving them hours of their lives back every single day. Now, with the Bransokati poised at the FDA finish line, you might wonder, does Insmed have competition in here? Well, right now, doctors rely on old methods to manage bronchiectasis, daily chest physio, rotating antibiotics like azithromycin, and steroids during major flare-ups. These treatments patch up symptoms, but can't stop the disease from progressing and raise concerns about side effects and antibiotic resistance. Currently, no approved medicines anywhere truly halt bronchiectasis from worsening, but two drug makers are racing to catch up with Insmed. Boringer Ingelheim is developing an oral drug that blocks the same enzyme family as Brensocative. Early phase two results showed it could cut flare-ups by around 30% compared to placebo. A larger phase three trial will start soon. 
Side effects were mild, mainly skin peeling and headaches, similar to placebo. Another company is Heisco Pharma, based in China. They're testing a pill targeting the same enzyme. Recent phase 2 results were promising. Patients saw flare-ups drop by as much as 60%. Side effects included mostly mild cough and mouth sores, with no serious red flags reported. So, how does Brensocatib stack up against these two? Well, in effectiveness, in the landmark Aspen study, uh, Brensocatib reduced flare-ups by about one-third, significantly slowed lung function loss, similar to promising early data from the competitors. Now, Brensocatib has a timing advantage here. They are already with the FDA awaiting on August 12, 2025's decision. The other drugs are at least three to four years behind. Insmed's Aspen trial was the largest study ever done in bronchiectasis, providing regulators and physicians with extensive safety data. If approved, which I find no reasons why it shouldn't be, Brensocatib could enjoy several years as the only disease-modifying treatment available. That first mover advantage could allow Insmed to define the standard of care and set patient expectations long before competitors catch up. So, with Brensocatib nearing potential FDA approval and TPIP showing great promise, the next logical question is, does Insmed have the cash it needs? Thankfully, Insmed's first approved drug Every case continues to keep the lights on. Sales for the first quarter of 2025 reached 92.8 million, a strong 23% increase from the year before. For the full year, management expects between 405 and 425 million in revenue. And Insmed recently got another big boost. On June 11, 2025, the company priced a major public stock offering, raising $750 million by selling 7.8 million shares at $96 each. With an additional 1.17 million shares in reserve, this fresh cash infusion pushes Insmed's war chest to approximately $1.9 billion, up significantly from the $1.2 billion it had just three months earlier. And doing the math, with a quarterly cash burn around 200 million, Insmed now has enough money to comfortably operate through the second half of 2027. That runway ensures the smooth launch of Brensocatib, completion of TPIP's clinical phase 3 trials, and even leaves extra cash in reserve. In short, Insmed is financially secure and ready for the next exciting chapter. So with Insmed's financial health solidified, let's quickly talk about debt. Insmed recently took a big step to clear the books. Its largest debt, $570 million convertible note, was called on June 6. Most holders are swapping their notes for about 17.8 million shares. This move wipes out nearly all significant debt and saves about 4 million a year in interest. Combined with June's 750 million stock offering, Insmed's balance sheet is now essentially debt free carrying only around 16 million in smaller loans and leases. And yes, the total shares outstanding increased about 5%, but the trade-off leaves the company cash rich and financially very flexible heading into major launches. So will Insmed need more cash anytime soon? In short, probably not before 2027. With about 800 million available per year, Insmed has secured at least two full years of runway after Brensocatib expected FDA decision in August 2025. That's plenty of time to support the drug's US launch, finish TPIP's phase 3 trials, and advance early stage gene therapy research with additional financing. If Brensocatib succeeds, revenue combined with discipline spending might expand the runway even further, making future fundraising purely strategic. And even if commercialization hits some bumps, Insmed's current cash will comfortably last into late 2026, offering management enough time to adjust strategies or explore partnerships before needing more capital. Whenever I'm looking into a biotech stock, the first thing I want to know is, what's the catalyst? And that's why I use Biofarm Catalyst. Their FDA calendar is gold. I can quickly see what companies have major events coming up, like Pidufa dates or adcoms. And that's where the big moves usually happen. I also check their cash database to make sure a company is not running out of 
cash. Plus, I like looking at low float names that can really pop. And with the Elite Plus tools, I get access to the conference calendar to catch data drops and even track what top biotech hedge funds are buying or dumping each quarter. So if you're doing biotech research, this saves you so much time. I'll drop the link below, so go check it out. Now, let's talk about market potential. Around half a million Americans live with bronchiectasis and approximately 70,000 new patients are diagnosed each year. If brand Socatip launches around a net price of $75,000 annually, and captures just 15% of patients in the US and Europe, yearly sales could exceed a billion dollars, more than doubling today's entire bronchiectasis treatment market. And I know, I said $75,000. Let's discuss pricing. When we look at rare respiratory diseases, their drug prices often range from about $150,000 to $250,000 annually. Brinsocatip targeting a broader market is expected to launch around $70,000 to $80,000 per year before insurance discounts. It's a premium price, but competitive and justified by the convenience of a single daily pill. In case of TPIP, Current treatments for PAH, like Tivaso, already cost around $150,000 to $200,000 per year. With its once daily inhalation, TPIP could comfortably price itself similarly, probably around $150,000 to $170,000 annually, balancing competitive positioning with improved patient convenience. These are informed estimates based on industry standards, giving us realistic revenue targets for planning ahead. And now, my favorite part of the video. Let's carefully explore three possible futures for InSmed stock over the next three years, considering the recent dilution from share offerings. First, flat tire scenario. If the FDA unexpectedly rejects Brensocatip or if it faces severe commercialization issues post-launch, shares could drop significantly. Under this scenario, InSmed stock might fall toward the low 20s per share, reflecting a reset closer to cash per share levels. Two, we have the base case scenario. Suppose Brensocative gets approved, but initial market adoption is slower than anticipated, perhaps due to pricing challenges or conservative prescribing habits. In this scenario, shares might remain relatively stable, hovering around the mid-30s for a while as the market awaits for clearer evidence of uptake. And third, the home run scenario. In the most optimistic outcome, Brinsocative not only receives FDA approval, but rapidly becomes a preferred treatment among doctors and patients. Concurrently, TPIP delivers outstanding phase three trials, generating further enthusiasm. Under these circumstances, despite recent dilution, shares could maintain or even surpass current levels pushing into the high 90s or beyond within three years, fueled by substantial revenue growth and strong investor confidence. Keep in mind, today's share price of approximately $95 a share assumes nearly perfect execution. Adjust your expectations and manage your risk accordingly. Remember, biotech investing always carries uncertainty. And that brings us to the end of our deep dive into InSmed. We covered the science, the competition, finances, and outlined clear scenarios for the stock's future. Biotech fortunes can shift very quickly, often driven by a single FDA announcement or new data release. Thank you for sticking around until the end. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for future deep dives. As always, remember, None of this is financial advice. My goal is simply to give you the research and insights so you can make informed decisions for yourself. See you in the next